You know, life has a funny way of putting things into perspective. The other night I was sitting there in my soiled underwear with my pint of cheap vodka, scrolling through late night TV, when I happened to catch a rerun of the original Fast and the Furious from the distant, half-forgotten year of 2001. A simpler, more innocent time. A time before smartphones and social media, before everyone was angry at everyone else about everything. Before movies had to be updated for modern audiences. Back then, we never could have imagined that a humble movie about illegal street racing would somehow morph into a grandiose tale of international espionage, death-defying bank heists, clandestine government agencies, deadly terrorist groups, sci-fi doomsday weapons, personal vendettas and rivalries, tear-jerking goodbyes, world domination plots, and cars getting launched into outer space. <laughs> In short, The Fast and the Furious has been on quite the journey over the past 20 years. Some good, some bad, and some better off forgotten about. <coughs> but every journey has to come to an end. Which brings me along to Fast 10, the supposedly penultimate movie in a franchise that's been going on longer than half of you have been alive. Well, until the studio needs a guaranteed money maker, or the actors realise they don't have a whole lot going on without it at least. But can Fast 10 possibly hope to live up to its incredible 20 year legacy? Can it deliver the epic action set pieces and interpersonal dramas we've come to expect from these films and set the stage for the final chapter of the Fast and Furious saga? Or is it a tired old banger running on empty and destined for the scrapyards? The answer is, of course, what does it fucking matter? At this point, the Fast and the Furious movies are basically immune to film criticism. They've ascended to a higher plane of existence, far removed from such petty mortal concerns. They know exactly what they are and what their audience wants from them, and they're happy to give it to them by the truckloads. Fast cars, hot women, exotic locations, huge ensemble casts, ridiculous action sequences that laugh in the face of physics, gravity and common sense, plots that don't make a lick of sense and absolutely don't care about it, big bald guys growling lines in something that could vaguely be described as English, and of course... Family. 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 And you know what? I fucking love it. Like a prisoner that slowly comes to accept and even depend on their own confinement, I've finally embraced the Fast and the Furious movies for what they are. The ultimate switch your brain off and enjoy cinema experience. They're dumb as fuck, borderline incoherent, melodramatic, over the top nonsense, and they absolutely do not care. And they cordially invite you not to care either. So what the fuck, let's talk about it, shall we? So Fast 10 opens up with an extended flashback to the events of Fast Five, where Dom and the gang steal hundreds of millions of dollars from Brazilian drug lord Hernan Reyes, killing him in the process. All well and good, you might think, until the movie reveals his previously unknown son Dante who survived the confrontation. Because of course he did, because there's always a long lost son, or a brother, or a daughter, or a fucking pet alligator ready to replace the previous bad guy. Anyway, flash forward ten years and Dante's back for a spot of revenge. What exactly has he been doing for the past? past 10 years and why have we never heard of him before now? Don't care. The point is that Dante takes over Cypher's organisation and uses it to lure the team into a fake mission to steal a computer chip in Rome, but naturally Cypher escapes his ambush and shows up at Dom's front door to warn him that the whole mission is a trap. Why exactly is she now considered a good guy when she literally murdered the mother of Dom's child in front of his eyes? Don't care. Fuck it, she's probably going to show up alive in the next film anyway. Everyone eventually does, because no one's truly gone in the Fast and the Furious. So Dom rushes to Rome to warn his friends, but it all goes a bit wrong and a massive bomb gets detonated in the middle of the city. And the CIA for some reason believes that Dom and his team are responsible, despite the fact that they've risked their lives for them on countless occasions, and they launch an international manhunt to apprehend them all. But one member of the agency doesn't quite believe it, and covertly helps Dom and the others to escape and hunt down Dante so they can bring him to justice. So basically the movie splits the main characters into several smaller factions, each pursuing different objectives 
perspectives in different ways, with the narrative jumping between each one of them as the story progresses. Something they probably had to do because I'm fairly convinced there's more people in Dom's team than the entire MCU at this point. This is what happens when you don't actually kill previous antagonists, but just kind of absorb them into your family like some cinematic Katamari. Eventually you're going to end up with more characters than you know what to do with. Speaking of characters, there's not a huge amount I can say about the regular players at this point. Everyone's been doing this shit for so long that they know exactly what's expected of them and slip into their old roles like putting on a comfortable pair of boots. Roman is still the butt of every single joke, Han's in the movie because Justin Lin really likes the actor for some reason, Ramsey's still trying to justify what the point of her character is, and Dom still growls his way through every line of dialogue like he wants to personally eat every human in the room. That being said, the cast all seem to be having a good time and actually look like they want to be there. Unlike the previous film, where it was pretty obvious there'd been fallen outs behind the scenes and everyone looked kind of bored and tired and pissed off with each other. The newbies on the other hand are a bit more interesting. Jason Momoa is definitely having a ball with this one, chewing up the scenery like it's going out of fashion and flouncing around like some weird love child of Jack Sparrow and the Joker. Taking revenge for the death of your father isn't exactly a complex motivation, but what the fuck, it's not like we're talking Shakespeare here. These movies are basically a cheesy Spanish soap opera done on a $200 million budget. Alan Richson is big and intimidating and ruthlessly efficient as the new CIA leader, and holy shit, after crushing it in Reacher and now this, the guy looks like a solid contender for the next big action star. Brie Larson even turns in a decent performance as a rogue agency operative who risks her career to help the team. The script doesn't give her a huge amount to work with, and she looks about as comfortable with a gun as a male feminist in a strip club, but overall, I think she does a pretty good job with the role. Aside from all that, there's the usual elements you'd expect from every Fast and the Furious movie. Lots of awesome looking cars, gun and technology porn, big burly guys and gorgeous women hanging out in beautiful places. The action jumps from exotic location to exotic location with no real attempt to justify any of it. They just felt like going there, I guess. And who the fuck am I to argue? If I had a couple of hundred million dollars to play with, you can bet I wouldn't set my movie in fucking Pittsburgh. The set pieces are exactly the kind of over-the-top, gravity-defying stupidity that characterises these films, and if you haven't accepted that that's just how these movies are at this point, then you're probably not going to get won over by these. I mean, when the safe hijacking scene from Fast Five turns out to be the most grounded and believable sequence in your movie, I don't even know what to say to you. The thing is, the film doesn't care in the slightest. It knows how ridiculous and melodramatic and over-the-top it all is, and it's not going to apologise for any of it. And you know what? There's something kind of awesome about that. Fast 10 is a throwback to a very different time in Hollywood. A far better time when all they really cared about was making entertaining products for people. A time long before the whole industry disappeared up its self-important arse. Before activist writers tried to infuse every movie with whatever divisive and mean-spirited political cause happened to be flavour of the month. A time when big, tough-talking, larger-than-life heroes didn't have to be shrunk down and belittled just to elevate their co-star. A time when epic, emotional moments didn't have to be undercut with ironic, self-deprecating humour at every turn. A time when we actually looked forward to new releases instead of quietly dreading them and wondering how much damage they were going to do to our favourite characters. A time when movies were allowed to just be... Fun. Maybe I'm getting a bit more nostalgic for stuff like this as I get older and the movie landscape changes, or maybe it's because the end of this franchise is looming on the horizon, but whatever the reason, I find myself with this weird sense of goodwill and warmth towards these movies. It's like revisiting your favourite childhood restaurant as an adult and finding that it's still a thriving business, and although the food might not exactly be gourmet cuisine, it's still decent enough to leave you satisfied by the end. And I guess the end is something that's kind of on my mind with this this film. For all its ups and downs and silly moments over the years, I think when the Fast and the Furious series is finally done, the world of cinema is going to be a bit less fun without it. And maybe once in a while, it really is okay to just switch your brains off and enjoy it while it lasts. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Go away now.